The GMTK Game Jam is an annual game development challenge where you have four days to create a game based around a theme. In the past, I've made a variety of different games from arena shooters to puzzle platformers, but this year I wanted to spend my time on something different. You see, I recently reviewed all the games I made in the past five years. I found a number of common problems with them, but I haven't had time to fix any of them. Some are things I got right in the past, but lost when I switched game engines. Some are things I've tried once or twice, but never kept and others are completely new ideas to me. As such, I took the time I put aside for the GMTK Game Jam to create a game template in Godot that I can use for my future games. I began by looking back at the games I made in my old game engine. They had a common set of menus that gave them a welcoming and friendly experience. I lost this when I switched to Godot. Every game I've made since has had an inconsistent experience. So that's the first thing I wanted to fix. Starting with the basics, pausing a game level. I made a level scene with some junk, which enables and disables its processing when the P button is pressed. When the level is paused, a pause scene is shown. This initially just had some text, however, it's something to fully flesh out in a moment. Before then, I want to show you the level selection screen from Wizard Retreat, the game I made for the 2023 GMTK Game Jam. I think this screen is quite good. Being able to see how many levels a game has and jump between them is an incredible user experience, especially in a game jam. As such, I've made a new level selection screen. This works by providing a list of levels to the level selector in game. A button is then generated for each level, which loads the associated scene. There's also metadata around each level. For example, is locked will disable the button and show a padlock and score shows a number of stars on the button. This was my first real experience using Godot's UI system. Initially, I systematically tried organizing the buttons. However, this wasn't very scalable and didn't make use of the engine's features, such as a scroll bar. As such, I placed buttons into Godot's containers, which took charge of all the positioning. This made creating the list easy and look much better. It also made creating the settings menu a lot easier. This menu provides a set of sliders for changing the game's volume. Each slider is hooked up to an audio bus and changes the volume based on the slider position. With this menu in place, I added it to the pause scene to give the player control over their settings and some use to the pause screen. Finally, the last menu I worked on, and also the simplest, was the main menu. The main menu ties together the pause, settings and level selection screens into a coherent experience, giving the game a place to welcome the player. I really missed having a consistent menu like the games in my old game engine had. I think it's something easy to forget about, especially in game jams, but it's amazing to have a central hub for your game's identity and a common starting point for the player's journey. With these menus in place, I moved on to looking at how my games introduce themselves to the player. This is something I've been on a long journey with. My first ever GMTK game, Gods of Hell, showed you the controls on its start screen. This was functional, but didn't let you know anything else. Later on, I introduced an instruction screen, which evolved over a number of games. This peaked in Super Word Chain, my entry into the Chain Letter Jam. This instruction screen tells you the controls and objectives with accompanying animated images. It looks really nice and helps you understand what to do, but it's easy to avoid and to forget when you start the game. This brings me back to the 2023 GMTK Game Jam and Wizard Retreat. This was the first game I tried to create a tutorial for. This is essentially the easiest level with static text placed around to explain what everything does. Again, this is functional, but I found players struggled to remember the information because it wasn't very engaging. Finally, this brings me on to last year's GMTK Game Jam and the tutorial I created for Shrinker's Workshop. This tutorial was made up of a list of hints that dynamically appear based on your actions. This was significantly more engaging However, it still had limitations, such as getting the hints to appear in the right position and getting the player to see them. To continue my work on a tutorial system, I first needed a basic player controller and camera following them. I then created an off-screen hint pointer. This is a UI element that can point the player in the direction of an off-screen hint. Once the hint appears, the pointer hides itself. Next, I created an area where actions can be performed. When the player is in the area, it will listen for an action to be completed, such as pressing a button. If no action is provided, then it will automatically complete when the player enters the area. These can be combined together to create an advanced hint, pointing the player 
to an area of interest where they must perform an action. Next, I added a UI element that would appear next to a button. When the button is pressed, the element hides. This can be used to create an on-screen hint to introduce UI to the player. Finally, I combined these in-game and on-screen hints with last year's tutorial system. This creates a convincing dynamic tutorial which can be used to introduce the player to controls, UI and the world. The last thing I did in the jam was an art pass because it all looked awful and I wanted to know how easy it would be to run a game through the template. I used a color palette that I have recently used in a pixel art challenge to create a number of buttons, titles and backgrounds. I also created a cover image and style for the itch page. This was relatively easy, although some things such as the volume slider had to be stylized in the game engine rather than an image editor. Whilst this works, I'm not convinced that's how I want to approach every game I make. Regardless, it looked a lot better, so I was happy with what I had made. Hopefully going forward, I can use this template for my future games. I'm particularly excited to see if my games will improve with better tutorials and game menus. What do you think about this? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you've enjoyed watching this devlog for my 2025 GMT Gay Game Jam game. Leave the video a like to let me know you did and subscribe for more great game development content such as this video about the latest release for my museum management game. Thanks for watching and goodbye.